assalamu alaikum uh, let's start lecture number 33 uh, last lecture of 11th week and in this lecture uh, we will uh, start chapter number 9 that is deflection of beam um, and following topics we will cover in this uh, chapter first is uh, we will see deformation in the transverse load and we will use equation of elastic curve then we will see uh, statically indeterminate beams uh, where you cannot find the reaction is simply uh, static equilibrium condition that uh, by using that sum of forces is equal to zero and sum of moment is equal to zero so you cannot use uh, the number of unknowns or reactions are more than uh, these two conditions equation so we have to consider what is a deflection so as discussed in previous chapter as well okay and the last topic we will see is the method of superposition so we can use method of superposition uh, and we will see the method of superposition for statically determinate beams as well as statically indeterminate beams but this lecture uh, we will see uh, equation of elastic curve how to develop equation of elastic curve and how to find deflection with that okay um, and we will not cover 9.3 9.5 9.6 and other topics as well now uh, after chapter 9 when we when we will finish chapter 9 so then we will do chapter 7 uh, because uh, for me it's a logical way that we should complete uh, the all the topics related to beam and then we move to the another topic okay now deformation let's what's the deformation the transverse loading now if you remember the chapter uh, 4 when we're discussing pure bending so over there uh, we have an equation of uh, curvature and that equation of curvature was if you remember that was what over rho is equal to m divided by e i and this was equation of curvature for the neutral axis where the uh, where the stresses were zero and uh, the radius was equal to one over e over i divided by m now we will use this radius of curvature and now uh, if you look at this equation radius of curvature or curvature sorry e is material property i is section property is not changing because since it's a prismatic beam so the cross section is not changing the, uh, the in case of pure bending the moment is also not changing but in this case, let's suppose we have a cantilever beam uh, with the point load at the free end. So what is happening? The moment is changing with the length of the beam. So the curvature of the neutral axis will change with respect to moment. So if you look at this expression, so this one, so relation between bending moment and curvature for pure bending remains valid for general transverse loading. Means for a simply supported beam with a, a different loading condition or overhanging beam or maybe cantilever beam, the relationship between this curvature and uh, the bending moment will remain same, valid. And there are some other conditions as well that uh, uh, the deformations are very small and we are within elastic limit, elastic proportional limit. Okay, now using this relationship, 1 over rho mx over ei. So, in case of cantilever beam, what we have? So, if we look at the cantilever beam, so the moment is equal to minus px. So basically that is a moment in terms of x or equation so if, if i want to write so that is moment as a function of length of the beam 
that will equal to minus px and if you put m is x is equal to 0 so that is point a when x is equal to l that will be point b considering that the length of the beam is l so if we put this relationship uh, the in equation of uh, curvature so we have 1 over rho is equal to minus p x divided by e i now what does it mean the curvature varies linearly with respect to x and at free end at free end so when put x is equal to 0 so at free end when x is equal to 0 so 1 over rho is 0 the curvature is 0 but radius of curvature is infinite means for this problem it will become straight line over here it is not changing at support means at fixed set when we put x is equal to l 1 over rho is not equal to 0 so because if you put x is equal to l so it gives some finite value and the radius uh, is p e i divided by p l means the radius has some value but this relationship it does not give us how much it deflect from the original position means if i draw uh, what is the original beam before applying load it will be a straight line right so how much it deflect current we don't know right now how much this deflection is or uh, some book you will find as a y so how to find the relationship between this equation and the deflection of the beam now for the deflection of the beam uh, let, let's consider this overhanging beam. okay now the reaction at a and c if we want, want to find what is the reaction at a and c so it will be simply ra will be 1 kilonewton rc will be 5 kilonewton so this is statically determinant beam and you can find uh, the reaction by simply sum of moment if we take it if a is equal to 0 we can we get the reaction at c and if we take moment at c is equal to 0 or sum of forces downward acting 0 so we can get ra now the bending moment diagram for this problem will be like this from a to b the moment uh, will be 3 kN and it will be positive then it will be 0 at e but at c it will be minus 6 kN and at d it will be 0 right so you can try what will be the bending moment diagram for this problem now if you look at this uh, bending of the beam so it will bend something again this is exaggerated here okay from a to c or a to e you know if you look at a to e so this uh, we can find what is the curvature by using this relationship right and the curvature is zero at point where the bending moment is zero means at each end means at this end it, the curvature is it will become straight line because it's not uh, continuing it and a is also will, will be straight line if you put curvature if you want to find curvature over here it will be straight line over here uh, and now the, when the beam bend it bend as a continuous curve okay means it's a continuous curve there is no discontinuity in the curve although there is a discontinuity in the bending moment diagram but there is no discontinuity in the curve because it's a continuous homogeneous material this relationship uh, and at e also the curvature will be uh, zero because it will be a straight line because the bending moment is zero now if you look at beam uh, where the bending moment is positive 
So if you look at this region where the bending moment positive, so the bending of the beam is concave upward. Means where the bending moment is positive, this region, so the bending is concave upward. And where the bending moment is negative, the region, so the bending is concave downward. Okay, now this bending moment diagram for those type of beams will give you an idea how the beam will deflect of deformation of the beam. So when it's positive, so bending moment, so it's a concave upward, when bending moment is negative, then it concave downward. Now the maximum curvature occur where the moment magnitude is maximum. Again, the maximum curvature, not we are talk, not talking about currently deflection. The maximum curvature occur where the bending moment is maximum because again this equation with when the curvature will be maximum when obviously this value bending moment will be maximum because E is constant, material is so much uh, continuous and homogeneous and I is com uh, constant because it's a prismatic beam. So equation of the beam shape or elastic curve is required to determine maximum deflection and slope. So why we'll need slope, because we'll look, uh, but we need an equation uh, of this curve, beam curve, uh, and if if I look at neutral axis or centroidal ax, neutral axis, so it will bend, bend as a continuous curve. So we need what is the equation of this curve, and with that we can find the maximum deflection and slope. Okay, uh, now how we will see. Now let's consider a curve, any a curve, and uh, this is not a arc; it's some curve. Um, now, if I'm interested to find what is the curvature at this point, so that equation uh, from the calculus, you know that is 1 over rho is equal to d2y by dx square and divided by 1 minus dy by dx square holds 3 by 2. Now, uh, in beam, uh, this the slope is very very small now if we can take the slope square so it will be again uh, nearly equal to zero so if we can take this equation or this term uh, very small so this term will become zero so we can take this term so this term will become zero and what we left? We left with this expression. So 1 plus 0, so it will become d2y by dx square. And 1 over rho, we already know that is equal to m moment as a function of x divided by ei. Right? So, what we have? Now we have this expression ei 1 over rho and we can write ei due to y by dx square is equal to mx. Now if we integrate it, it will give dy by dx, that is slope. Now this slope is uh, very small, so it will almost equal to angle theta. So considering that what is our uh, value of slope, so in this case, so we can say that tan theta that is dy by dx and since it's very small theta is very small so it's approximately equal to theta so we can write ei theta is equal to so ei dy by dx again we are integrating it so after integrating this equation we get integral 0 to x uh, how much region we are interested mx um, equation of moment that we discussed previously as well. So dx plus 
c1 now the c1 is constant of integration now if we again integrate it this equation so we get ei uh, integral x dx this value now what we have c1x plus c2 now we have two constant c1 and c2 are constant now how to find these value of c1 and c2 and again this giving me the equation of elastic curve so this term will give me equation of elastic curve and i can find the value of y at different location by putting the value of x so that y will give me the deflection of the beam okay now this constant c1 and c2 that we can find with that boundary condition and for the different beam uh, support the boundary condition will be different for example if you consider simply supported beam now at point a and point b this beam will not move in y direction so deflection will be zero at a and b so what we will do we put uh, in this equation first x is equal to zero that is point a and y is equal to zero we will find what is a, a constant one of the constant and the other constant we can find our uh, one equation we will get other constant we put x is equal to l so y will be equal to zero so we have two equation and by solving is simultaneously we will find the value of c1 and c2 so the boundary condition for simply supported beam is y a if y at a will be zero and y at b equal to zero because those support at those support the beam cannot move in vertical direction right but again the slope will not be zero okay now overhanging beam the same boundary condition so let's suppose we have a this overhanging beam initially straight line when we applied load it deflect something like this now in this case again y a means if you put x is equal to a location a so deflection will be zero and if you put x is equal to location b so y b equal equal to zero so two equation by solving it we will gain again get constant c1 and c2 now what about cantilever beam now in case of cantilever beam it's a different story for example now b can is a free end and it can move up and down but if you look at this uh, at fixed end so if this fixed end if you know that this point a cannot rotate as well as cannot move in any upward direction means this point a cannot move up and down and it cannot rotate in clockwise and anti-clockwise direction so what does that mean means that deflection will be zero and the slope or angle will also equal to zero means if there's a pin support the angle can change because it can rotate about the pin but at fixed support it cannot uh, rotate so in this case so what we have we have condition that deflection at a will be zero and uh, theta a that is that is slope dy by dx value that we found previously that we were looking so so that term will also equal to zero now if we remember so that was we take as a uh, theta so ei sorry ei ei so that was equal to integral 0 to x mx and dx plus c1 now so this you will put equal to 0 for cantilever beam uh, this equation and you will know how you can find the one constant at the, and the c if you put the value of c1 on equation of elastic curve you will get the value of uh, other constant as well 
So uh, by using this equation of elastic curve, you can find the deflection of the beam. And where the deflection, so in this case, if you're interested to find what where the deflection for this overhanging beam. So if you look at this curve, where the slope will be zero, where theta will be zero, for that location, you will have maximum deflection, or it can be on this side as well. But in case of the simply supported beam, so again, where the slope will be zero, theta is equal to zero. So over there, you have maximum deflection. In can deliver beam, you know, for this example, at free end, you have maximum deflection. Okay, we will solve some problem and you will get uh, to know all the further. Uh, it will further clarify. For example, let's see this concept application. Okay, now this concept app concept application that a cantilever beam AB is uniform cross section and carries a load of P at free end. So it's shown over here. So we have a cantilever beam uh, AB with the length L and is a point load at A. So first we have to find uh, the equation of elastic curve. So what will be the equation of elastic curve for this beam for this beam and what will be the, and the deflection and slope at end a so what will be the deflection at end of slope a now so first we have to develop the moment equation so it's very simple if we take a section anywhere between a and b let me take a section and I'm going like this. So if I draw a free body diagram for that, considering that section, what we have? We have V acting downward, we will take positive, and we have moment acting in this direction. And we have a load P acting on the free end, and this distance will become X. Now, M plus Px is equal to 0 and M is equal to minus Px. Now, this equation is valid for the whole beam. Uh, if you put X is equal to 0, the moment will be equal to 0. And if you put X, P, X is equal to L, the moment will be equal to minus PL. And if you draw bending moment diagram, for this problem so let me m this is x so it will be like straight line and it will be zero at a and it will be maximum at b and it will be zero at a so it's a straight line and this equation is also giving an idea that it will be a straight line right now we know the equation of moment now let's see how to find uh, the deflection, uh, the equation of elastic. So as we know that uh, the equation so this will become minus Px. Now, let's set decay. Ei dy by dx so we are integrating in x and this will become if you integrate it that will become minus p x square by 2 plus c1 okay and we have if we again integrate, if we again integrate it, so again integrating with respect to x, that will become ei by minus px cubed by 6 plus c1x plus c2 okay now 
we have two uh, constant but we don't know the value of this constant but uh, for the cantilever we know the condition boundary condition so what will the boundary condition for cantilever be so at x is equal to l theta is 0 and at x is equal to l we have y is equal to 0 so means let me put this is my equation a and this is my equation b so now if i put the value like for example uh, this equation so this equation a so at x is equal to l theta is equal to 0 or dy by dx is equal to 0 so if i put the value of in this equation so this term will be 0 so c1 I will have P L square by two. Right? And this will lead us to the equation A that EI dy by dx is equal to minus P X square by two plus P L square by 2. Now, if you put and the equation B, putting the value of C1, so that will become EIY is equal to minus PX cubed by 6 plus PL square by 2X plus C2. Now, mm, this is my equation number. Let me put C. Now, what we, what boundary condition we have for this one? So, when we put x is equal to L, so y is equal to 0. So, that equation number C, so that will become 0 is equal to minus 1 by 6 PLQ. plus 1 by 2 PL cube plus C2. So when we solve it, the value of C2 will be equal to minus 1 over 3 PL cube. And if you put this equation uh, back to this equation number C we have, so my equation of elastic curve will become EI y is equal to minus 1 by 6 p x cube right plus 1 by 2 p l square x minus 1 by 3 p l cube so this is my equation of elastic curve so so this equation is my equation of elastic curve and uh, for the slope uh, we had an equation B uh, so that was equal to EI dy by dx or we can write EI theta and that equation was equal to minus 1 by 2 p x square minus uh, sorry plus 1 by 2 p l square so this second equation will give us the slope at different location and now if you look at this equation this is well this is valid for the whole length of the beam because the moment equation is valid for the whole length of the beam now what will be the uh, uh, slope at end A. Uh, now, if you put slope at end A, so uh, so theta at A, so 
so that lead us to x is equal to 0 so this equation ei theta will become simply 1 by 2 p l square and this lead us to that slope at free end at a is equal to so let me put theta a over here at subscript so just to know so it will be simply will be p l square divided by 2 times e i now what is the deflection at a so y at a so let me put that's again leads to us to x is equal to 0 now using this equation for deflection so that equation will become e i y a so uh, 1 over 6 b, b x cube that will become 0 1 over uh, 1 over 2 p l square x that will become 0 and it will be simply we will have minus p l cube by 3 and this will lead us to deflection at a is equal to p l cube divided by sorry negative sign showing that downward direction e i so this you will get the deflection at a using equation of elastic curve okay now let's see another simple uh, concept application then uh, this time we have a simply supported beam uh, for prismatic beam and load shown determine the slope and deflection at point d now we have to find what is the deflection at slope at t okay now in order to find what is the deflection and slope at t so first we have to find what is the reaction at a and b so uh, considering this as a simply supported beam putting the free body diagram putting the reaction over here and you can solve it so a will be equal to 3 by 4 p and b will be equal to p by 4 so it's easy to find the reaction and you can do it now since we have interested what will be the deflection at slope point a so and ha okay one more thing if you draw a uh, bending moment diagram for this beam it will be something like this from a to d uh, it will be maximum at d and from d to b it will be zero at p and at d the value will be roughly around p l 4 by 16 right so at p a it will be or let's take a section where let's find what will be the value so if i take a section over here draw a free body diagram for that section so we have a reacting downward will be positive and we have a bending moment and this distance let's take an x now uh, m minus ax is equal to 0 so m is equal to a x so m is equal to 3 by 4 times p now at x is equal to 0 so moment is equal to 0 that is at a but if you put at x is equal to l by 4 so moment will be equal to sorry this is px so the moment will be equal to 3 p l by 16 so it will be maximum moment so the that this value will be 3 p l by 16 and the equation of moment will be 
this one and this is valid for section ad okay now uh, if you look at the bending moment diagram it's uh, it's not a continuous curve as compared to the previous one the previous one was a continuous curve for the bending moment diagram now if you have this situation when the bending moment cannot be defined with a continuous curve so you have to divide into section so for this beam we have to divide the, for the equation of elastic curve in two sections from ad and db okay so in order to find what will be the deflection or equation of elastic curve for section db we have to divide into two parts so one equation of elastic curve cannot be valid for this whole beam because of the moment although the beam will deflect as uh, 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 you can say uh, it will deflect as a, a continuous curve but uh, the so due to bending moment is not uh, continuous because the equation is ei d2 y by dx is equal to m moment in terms of x function of x so this function is not continuous so that's why we have to get two distinguished equations okay now since we are interested what is the deflection at slope at d so we have we are taking section ad and it's covering the d if i put the value so e i d to y by dx square so that will be equal to 3 by 4 times px now if i integrate it what is the value it will become if we integrating with respect to x so ei dy by dx so let me write as the in terms of theta as well so if we integrate it so this will become 3 p x square divided by 8 right now okay now let's take um, plus c 1 x and if I integrate uh, sorry not c 1 x it will be simply c 1 or it will not be x now if I further integrate it so it will become e i y so this will become 3 p x cube by uh, uh, 24 plus c1 x plus c2 and this 3 and this will cancel 3 at the 24 so this equation will become p x cube by 8 plus c1 x plus c2 now now if you look at this beam what boundary condition we have so if you look at this beam the boundary condition we have uh, let me switch the color of my pen so what boundary condition we have? let me write over here so at a when x is equal to 0 at a so y a will be equal to 0 and at x is equal to l that is at b y b will be equal to 0 now we have equation for section ad and the only we have for section ad we have only one condition so at x is equal to 0 we have y is equal to 0 but we have two unknowns for equation of elastic curve so what we have to do so let me give this equation number so this is my equation number one 
and this is my equation number two. Okay. Now for this problem, since if if, uh, if then when I told you that if you look at the bending moment curve, so it is not continuous. And so we have to consider this section D B as well. Okay. Now for section D B. So if I take a section somewhere over here and if I draw a free body diagram for that section. So we have A, we have P acting downward over here and we have bending moment and shape force acting. Okay. Now. The equation of moment that will be equal to 3 P by 4 times X minus P into X minus L by 4 taking this distance as X. Now this moment equation we will use to find the deflection and this is valid for section DB. Uh, this moment is equation is valid for section db now what we have so equation of elastic uh, sorry uh, that equation will become ei d2y by dx square and that will be equal to 3 px by 4 minus p x minus l by 4 and this is for section B, D, B. Okay, now let's use this. Okay, now uh, we have an equation uh, for the uh, region uh, D to B. And for region D to B, the equation was uh, d2 y by dx square ei so that was equal to minus 1 over 4 px plus 1 over 4 pl by simplifying the previous equation about the mx we get this value okay now let's integrated with respect to x so we have ei so let me put y2 over here uh, to distinguish uh, from the previous one so dy2 by dx and if i integrate this one so that will become 1 over 8 px square plus 1 over 8 sorry not 1 over 8 1 over, 1 over 4 plx plus c1 not c1 let this is another constant let me put c3 and if i further integrate it so that will become ei y2 and this value will be minus p x cube by 24 plus p l x by 8 l x square by 8 plus c 3 x plus c 4 so let me put this is equation number 3 and 4 okay now just recall if you recall equation one and two so if i put equation one and two over here equation one was so let me put uh, so that will become ei 
so let me go to the theta 1 so that was equal to 3 by 8 p x square plus c1 and equation number 2 was ei let me put y1 for that one and that is for section ad and that was equal to p x cube by 8 plus c1 x plus c2 so this is my equation 1 and equation 2 now what we have now we have four unknowns and two boundary conditions so let's first use this two boundary condition so the first boundary condition is at x is equal to 0 that is a this lead us to y1 is equal to 0 so if you put this equation in 2 so 2 will lead us to c2 so 0 is equal to p0 cube divided by 8 plus c10 and plus c2 so c2 is 0 now this equation number 2 will become ei y1 is equal to px cube by 8 plus c1x and c2 is 0 okay now what boundary condition we have we have another boundary condition that is at x is equal to l or at b this is lead us to y2 is equal to 0 so equation number 4 that equation will be simply will become zero since y2 is zero so ei zero multiple zero so that will become minus p l cube by 24 plus p l cube by 8 plus c3 l plus c4 now if you put the value so c4 will be equal to So let uh, this equation okay let's take this equation so this is my equation number five okay now what boundary condition we have next okay now which, which is a common point between these two equations so if i look at this this is valid for AD and this is for DB. So which, which is common point? We have D common point. Now at D, that is X is equal to one by four L, that is point D. So theta one will be equal to theta two. This slope, because the slope, both of them should be equal, because it will be a, uh, representing the equation of elastic curve or slope of the elastic curve. So at point D, if you're considering DB or AD, at d the slope must be equal and also the deflection must be equal so we have two more boundary condition and by applying this two more boundary condition we will get the value of uh, constant c1 c2 we already know c3 and c4 so we have one equation five so we will two more equation by equating theta one and theta two at x is equal to l by 4 and one more equation by equating uh, y1 and y2 at x is equal to l by 4 and with with these two more equation you can find the value of c1 c2 and c uh, sorry c1 c3 and c4 so let's see so this is 
pi let me write theta 2 okay now let's see so again let me if i want to write uh, let me I'll try to at x is equal to l by 4 this will lead us to theta 1 is equal to theta 2 now theta 1 if i put x is equal to l by 3 so this will become 3 by 8 p l square sorry and this will become 4 multiplied by 8 so that will become 32 plus c1 and it must be equal to uh, the equation on the right hand side okay so if i put the value of l by 4 so that will become minus p l square by 32 plus p l square by uh, 4 4 16 plus c3 and if i simplify it so this equation or this expression uh, will be if i roughly simplify it so i can write 3 by 128 times uh, pl square plus c1 and is equal to seven by one twenty eight P L square plus C three. Now this is my equation number six. Now what else I have? Now the another equation I can get with x is equal to l by 4 this also lead to y2 is equal to y1 so when i put the value and this is for equation using equation number 4 and equation number this one 2 modified 2 so this will become p l cube by 512 plus c1 l by 4 plus sorry is equal to 11 by 11 p l cube by 1536 plus c3 l by 4 plus c4 and this is my equation number seven now three equation equation number five six and seven and we have three unknown c1 c2 and c3 c2 we already know that is equal to zero so if you simultaneously solve it these three equation we will get the value of c1 c2 and c3 and the value of c1 c2 and c3 uh, sorry c2 we know that c1 will become minus 7 pl square divided by 128 c2 we already calculated so that will be equal to 0 so c3 is equal to minus 11 pl square by 128 
and C4 is equal to PL cube by 384. So these are the constant uh, we will get after solving those equation. Now, <clears throat> what we have, um, now let's put this value in an equation of elastic curve for AD because we want to find the deflection at A and D and that will become theta EI theta 1 so that will be equal to 3 by 8 px q square sorry not q minus 7 pl square by 128 and equation for y2 sorry not y2 y1 since we are considering for ad 1 by 8 px cube minus 7 times pl square by 128 times x x so this is give me the equation of uh, slope and elastic curve now we have to find uh, the uh, what is the slope theta and y at d that is x is equal to l by 4 so when we put the value so theta 1 or let me write theta d that slope at d will be equal to if by putting the value of x l by 4 so if i simplify it that will become minus p l square divided by 32 EI and Y deflection at point D will be equal to minus 3 P L cube divided by 256 times EI. Now these are the deflection at slope at D and this is deflection at D. Okay, but this will be not maximum deflection. So what, where will we have maximum deflection? So in this case, where theta is equal to zero, where we have the y will be maximum. Since theta d is not equal to zero, so y d is not maximum. So how to find the maximum? So since we know that it will not be the curvature, uh, sorry, the uh, slope will not be zero between a to d, but it may be equal to zero between uh, d to b. So by, by that theta d is equal to sorry theta is equal to zero we will get the value of maximum and deflection. Okay, now let uh, for some reading assignment these are some uh, you have, just look at this concept application. Uh, please go through this concept application now 9.2. I already discussed 9.1 and 9.3 check the sample problem 9.1 and 9.2 and uh, some uh, some reading assignment or just check that any correction between bending moment diagram and number of equations for elastic curve that all I have already discussed so when uh, how many number of equation elastic curve you have to develop uh, depending on the bending moment uh, diagram so how the bending moment curve is there so Thank you and we will continue uh, inshallah for the next lecture as well.